Next, we're going to measure the intermolar width. This gives us more information about whether we are dealing with a narrow palate, a palate being the roof of your mouth. A narrow palate can be associated with sleep apnea, breathing disorders, a very nasal, uh, narrow nasal cavity, which can uh, hinder nasal breathing and again lead to even more oral breathing. A narrow palate can be caused by oral breathing, by low resting tongue posture, whether that's structural or habitual. It can be caused by limited airflow through the nose, whether it's structural or inflammatory. Uh, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but just know that if you have a narrow palate, you're likely dealing with some kind of oral motor and breathing issue with their upper, upper respiratory tract. Now, the molars that we are going to use for this, this uh, measurement is the first molar on the upper uh, jaw. So you're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. When you get to six, you should be on your first molar. Unless you are missing teeth for whatever reason, this counting won't quite work for you. And if that's the case, uh, what I would do is look for the tooth, the first tooth on each, the top and the bottom, that has four cusps. So those, that's where your molars start. You'll notice right before that, there's a tooth with two cusps. That's not your molar, that is your bicuspid. So make sure you are on your first molar on the top and the bottom. And then if you were in the dental office, what the ideal measurement would be is from the base of that tooth, so the tooth, the part of the tooth that's closest to the palate, to the base of the tooth on the other side. Now, because you're at home and you're using some kind of uh, ruler, it's not gonna be possible to get that close to the palate at that point of the tooth. So what I would suggest is measuring from the inside part that's closest to the lower jaw, right? So the occlusal surface where your teeth typically touch down. Just measure there and know that it's not directly comparative to the normative values that I'm gonna give you at the end here. So know that the number that you get, depending on the position of your tooth, it will likely be a little bit higher than what the actual distance is at the base of the tooth. So if you're doing this on your child, I'd have them lie on their back so that you can easily get in here and uh, deal with a stable head. And if you've been doing these assessments on yourself, I would actually recommend having someone measure this for you. It's obviously not one that's, that's very easily doable on yourself. So the norm values here, uh, if you're doing this on your child, you wanna get, or sorry, the, you wanna see somewhere in between the 38 and 40 millimeter range. If you are an adult, you wanna see between 42 and 44 millimeters. Again, I don't think that you're going to see many measurements that are higher than the normative values because we're dealing with a society that has arches or palate arches that are narrowing more and more. So you're likely going to see numbers that are, are much less than those numbers. If that's the case uh, and you're, you notice that your child has a, a relatively narrow arch, I highly suggest getting them into an airway dentist or a myofunctional therapist. The sooner the better. If they have a narrow palate, we can address that now at an earlier age in terms of influencing oral posture and just facial growth in general so that they're not dealing with sleep and airway issues as an adult. Now, if you are an adult and you're noticing that your, your uh, palate is quite narrow, there are ways to address that as well. It's just going to take a little bit more uh, intensive investigation of what's going on and, and how to best address it. Uh, and it will take a little bit more uh, invasive techniques typically as an adult because you're finished growing. So we have to think of other ways to intervene on the skeletal system. If you have any questions about intermolar width, please write it in the comment section below. Find me at summerspt.com or reach out to your local myofunctional therapist. And if you want a full myofunctional therapy assessment form to use as you follow along and click through these videos, go ahead and click the link below and enter your email address and a full myofunctional therapy assessment form will be emailed to you.